Hi, Nazar. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Hi, hi, Svetlana. It's my pleasure to join. Well, thank you for your time. Nazar, you are a partner and a CEO at one of the leading full service law firms in Ukraine, which has been recognized as the best law firm in Ukraine for, by many excellence awards. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Thank you. And we are calling this series The Negotiation in Action because, you know, inevitably in the current situation, there are a lot of negotiation going on and which I'm, sh which I'm sure is, going, is pretty, keeping you pretty busy right now. So would mm -hmm. you like to tell me what challenges this current uh, crisis has brought to your practice, especially what kind of negotiations are you involved in right now? Yeah, uh, with pleasure. Uh, I, I would uh, give some background about the overall situation in Ukraine first, because as a full service law firm, uh, we have different practices and they all face uh, different issues. Uh, but generally, um, we moved uh, to the remote work uh, almost three weeks ago. Actually, it was before the whole country moved uh, to the remote work and the quarantine was imposed. Uh, because we sort of, uh, we have foreseen uh, how the situation would develop because we were watching what was going on in other countries. And as a result, we decided that uh, we would be better off if we keep our people safer uh, at their homes. Moreover, the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure we had was fully adjusted to it, like a uh, number of years ago, uh, because we are very much a tech-focused firm. And uh, now, like uh, when the quarantine uh, was imposed eventually, uh, we can talk um, how uh, it affects uh, the business, the, the actual projects. Uh, I can start from the transactional practice, like from the capital markets projects and M&A projects. And most of them were uh, put on hold, unfortunately, because um, our clients realized that uh, the pandemic uh, which uh, takes place in the world uh, will also have economic effects and uh, that will eventually result in the economic crisis and as a result many of the deals which uh, were in the pipeline uh, should not be moving forward so that uh, part of the work has disappeared uh, but at the same time, like if you are talking again about those transactional practices, uh, other projects are coming up because uh, a number of uh, local companies, for instance, they already see they would face certain difficulties with the service in their debts and they initiate the restructuring. Uh, I believe that uh, more companies, uh, when time uh, goes, will file for bankruptcy. Uh, then we'll see a number of distressed uh, sales, which will also generate work for our M&A colleagues. And we already see uh, some of the foreign investment funds, which specialize in distressed assets. They are already looking at uh, certain assets in Ukraine and we feel um, yeah, they, they will be doing deals. So uh, the main idea is that uh, those practices just need to refocus from one, one type of work to another type of work, which is more common uh, for the current situation. And uh, the current situation uh, in some way reminds uh, the previous financial crisis in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. But uh, the difference is that uh, this time, uh, on top of the, all those economic hurdles, uh, people do not uh, meet uh, in person. So they have to keep all their negotiations and all their work remotely. So for us, as a Ukrainian law firm, it's uh, not such a big deal because we mostly worked with foreign clients before and uh, we are used to working via email or phone calls or video conferences lately. Uh, but uh, when working with local clients, it uh, creates a certain difference because not all of them are used to this type of uh, interaction. And uh, 
as a result, we need to do some uh, education for them. And that's uh, what, uh, what we are doing currently. So sometimes we approach our uh, long-standing clients and uh, tell them, um, maybe you have some uh, issues or some concerns. Uh, let's uh, have a video conference to discuss it. So we can just uh, uh, help you brainstorm some ideas. And, and that helps because people actually start using those uh, new facilities, uh, all these uh, Teams, Zoom, uh, Skype for Business and, and other stuff. And uh, then when it comes uh, to um, making deals, uh, they are already educated. So they, they know how, how to do it. And uh, uh, for most of the people, it's okay to see each other on the screen and discuss uh, certain things uh, like that. So it's uh, not necessary anymore to meet in person. But still, uh, we know some clients who are like more old-fashioned and they prefer to meet somewhere um, in the park or like uh, in the forest. <laughs> <laughs> No people around, and the, so you can talk and at the same time maintain social distance, <laughs> what is required nowadays. Yeah, and if we switch to other practice areas, I don't know to which extent you are interested in such uh, practice areas like litigation and oh. white collar crime uh, prosecution. Yes, uh, they have very different uh, setup because. Um, Unfortunately, those uh, things cannot be done remotely. Even though uh, Ukrainian courts now are discussing the possibility to do that via video conferences, and uh, uh, like about two years ago, uh, a project was initiated in Ukraine, which was called like uh, electronic court, like e-court, but that project did not progress much. Uh, so as a result, courts are physically not um, fit for, for doing it uh, online. Uh, at the same time, they are now quite scared uh, of the virus and uh, they uh, actually push for certain things which would allow these distant uh, court hearings and uh, evidence uh, discovery. Uh, but at the same time, uh, people still need to go to courts, like in most of the cases. So sometimes you can uh, ask for the postponement of, of the case, but uh, in most of the cases, uh, lawyers still need to go there. So that's why they need to have these uh, protective equipment. So I mean, like respirators, glasses, uh, maybe uh, these uh, sur surgical gloves. Uh, because they still touch papers and uh, other stuff. Uh, uh, and then, when we are talking about white-collar crime practice, I would say it's even uh, worse there, because uh, like police and other law enforcement agencies, they do not stop working. And if they arrest someone or, or if they do the search, so they don't care about quarantine. So, so when the clients need lawyers uh, on the spot, so they need to go there. So that, that, that the point. When uh, the issue on arresting someone or like on detainment, the person is decided. So lawyers need to be there because otherwise the client would get in, in jail and spend there like uh, much more time than necessary. Uh, so, uh, uh, for them, uh, we, as we see now, uh, the volume of work is not uh, decreasing, so they are quite busy at the moment. And we also expect that uh, because of all those economic issues in the country, uh, the government would be interested in uh, collecting more taxes in um, initiating more anti-corruption cases and uh, other stuff like that, which would help to um, supply the budget with necessary funds. So that's why I believe that uh, white collar crime practice, tax controversy practice, our litigators would be quite busy despite all the situation. Well, thank you. That's a great overview that you has, have given us. And I can tell that you really know what you're talking about. 
But going back to the business side, do you have any tips or recommendations to business or maybe wishes to business that, um, that you can give to them in order to survive or to deal with negotiations better? Yeah, again, uh, there are two types uh, of advice. Uh, e there is one type of advice which relates to the management of the company or like uh, the financial solvency of the company. And there you just need to understand uh, what type of uh, fixed costs you have, whether you can reduce them somehow, mm -hmm. uh, build the pipeline of uh, projects for the coming months and see if you will have enough workload for all the people. Because if you don't, then maybe you should uh, already start some negotiations with your people about uh, reducing their um, work day or like work week because we already know a number of firms in ukraine switched to the reduced working week like three days or four days working week so and people uh, get lower salaries as a result mm -hmm. and uh, actually that is something which may be absolutely necessary so if you don't see the pipeline of work but you still want to keep people as opposed to running the risk of paying the full costs uh, as it goes and then uh, arrive at the situation when you no longer have money to pay salaries at all. Uh, so it's some, it's some planning which is needed right now. And then on the other hand, uh, there is advice as to business. So you should be looking at uh, new products uh, because you should not expect that the work you used to do uh, would keep coming because uh, the environment is changing clients have different needs and they may not need uh, the products you were uh, offering them before so that's why at the moment you should closely analyze what uh, needs your clients have and how you can help them with that and come up uh, with some new products perhaps, uh, which would help them to save their business, uh, like to overcome uh, this difficult time. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. This is really, really interesting. And I do, did really learn a few tips and tricks that you gave, gave to us. Thank you for this overview. It, it's been a pleasure talking to you and let's hope that we will all go out of this crisis stronger. Yeah, we hope too. It was my pleasure talking to you and I hope uh, some of the advice uh, would be useful to other people. Thank you very much.